Following recovery from surgery for removal of her right breast, a radical mastectomy, a woman noticed that she had trouble raising her right arm above her shoulder and that her right scapula appeared to be jutting out abnormally. Which nerve was damaged during surgery? In this case, long thoracic nerve is the injured nerve. The long thoracic nerve runs along the superficial surface of the serratus anterior along with the lateral thoracic artery. It can oftentimes be injured with crutches or heavy backpacks or through surgical procedures such as the one mentioned here. When the long thoracic nerve is injured, they can't abduct past the horizontal or past 90 degrees because they don't have the serratus and the, the um, trapezius muscles to help with those uh, thoracic movements and rotations of the scapula. The suprascapular nerve is going to be an initiator abduction and does not have the strength to abduct to 90 degrees. The thoracodorsal nerve is going to the latissimus dorsi, so it can't be that because it's a medial rotator and adductor, not abductor. And the axillary nerve is going to the deltoid, which is also going to be a major abductor. But the fact that they can get to 90 degrees means that the deltoid must be working. And the key red flag in this one as well is the jutting of the scapula. Following a bull riding accident, a 31-year-old patient has difficulty extending the shoulder joint, abducting it to the horizontal plane, and extending the elbow and wrist joints. Which nerve structure has most likely been affected? Well, what you can do first is go through a question like this and start adding up what kinds of compartments are being done. So we have extension, abduction, extension of elbow and wrist. So there's a lot of extension going on. And automatically I start thinking of the radial nerve because it is the extensor nerve of the brachial plexus. And now we have to start saying how far back does this go? Um, so we have two components of radial nerve. We could either do the radial nerve itself or we could do the axillary nerve or it could be the combination of the two, which would be the posterior cord. If I include the fact that abduction is done, I know automatically that the axillary nerve is involved. But if I have extension of the forearm and the uh, shoulder affected, that means I have to be back to the posterior cord of the brachial plexus already.